Codina, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I post it to Facebook. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom, shakalaka, done. I'd like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They are international. So if you are anywhere in the world and you need to get to a therapist that does telehealth, go to betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, let's dive into it, shall we? Hello, everybody. Um, so, okay, today we are talking about um, the terror of trust. But before I get there, I want to talk to you about the um, conference I went to. So the conference was amaze balls. I'm so glad that Missy twisted my arm and said, come on, let's go. We'll go to Disney afterwards. And I'm like, I'm only going for Disney. So, <laughs> but the conference was great. So there were some things that were said at the conference that you guys need to know about that I'm not too happy about, but then there were other things said that I made me very happy. So this was a trauma conference put on by Pessy, which is really good. It had some great speakers. I mean, really great speakers. So I'm going to start with the not so great stuff and then we're going to move into the amazing stuff. So the not so great stuff was, is that there was a speaker named Kathleen Chard and she basically said that the DSM will never include CPTSD. Her reasoning for that, and I have a cold, so please excuse me if I grab a Kleenex and blow my nose every once in a while. Um, the choice of hanging out with small children is you pick up germs. Um, the reason for that, the reason that she said that CPTSD would never be in the DSM, first of all, let's take a look at the history of that. The history of that is that half of the DSM wanted to get rid of personality disorders altogether. So clearly half of the half, half of the APA, sorry, half of the APA wanted to get rid of personality disorders altogether. So clearly there are some clinicians out there that, you know, are kind of threatened by that diagnosis, if you want my personal opinion. Um, so they didn't want to, they wanted to get rid of them. Well, now they're willing to go on a spectrum. Okay, that's cool. So this person was very, you know, adamant. It would never be added. And her reasoning was, is that, well, CPTSD is exactly the same as PTSD. I don't think so. I don't think so. I really, truly do not think so. So um, I disagree with her. However, she is one of the uh, leaders in cognitive processing therapy for PTSD. So I do think that that is a good modality for people who have PTSD. It may be a good modality for people who've been through domestic violence, intimate partner violence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are interested in cognitive processing therapy, here is the book. This is what it looks like. I am going to read it just because I'm interested. Now, the thing that I liked about this, and, and she talked about how, how it works and all of this stuff, is that it's a fairly quick process. It's like 12 sessions, 12 to 15 sessions, which I like because it's good to get people up on their feet and going, right? Um, but like I said, I she's got a vested interest in, in this particular therapy, which is fine. So, um, but I didn't like her attitude towards CPTSD. Now, the person I did like was Frank Anderson. Do I have his stuff? Oh, Johnny, can you post Frank Anderson's website? So thank you. Um, Frank Anderson was amaze balls. This man walked out and he got it. Like he got it completely. Like he was down with CPTSD. He understood it. He thinks it should be included. So obviously there's some, there's some bickering in the APA, which I don't like, but you know, you get more than two people in a room, you're going to have bickering, especially if one or more of them are disordered themselves. So, I mean, that that was just, you know, when I heard that they were going to try to take a personality disorders out, I was just like, mm, no, this is not kosher. Something's going on. And thankfully, it stayed in, in the five edition, but they're going to be, they're going to be redoing it soon. So, um, I don't think that the ones that want to get rid of CPTSD have either experienced that kind of trauma or truly understand that kind of trauma. It is not exactly like PTSD. It is not. And it does not respond exactly as PTSD, although she was saying that it did. 
So, um, but I did like the modality. I did like the cognitive processing therapy. So that is something to look into if you are interested. So um, there is that. So Frank Anderson is a medical doctor and he totally got it. So he has, let me see if I can find it. Yep. That's him. Trauma blocks love, love heals trauma. And that's more like self love. And he's just a sweetheart. He walked out on the stage and I swear to you, I, I looked at Missy and I'm like, he looks like a kid. <laughs> he looks like he's 35. He's 60. He looks amazing. And he was talking about, you know, how he runs every day and, and meditates and all of this stuff. And so it's, it's, his books are really cool. I really liked his process. Um, he does talk about the arc of healing. Um, it's a, it's a course that he offers, um, resilience and forgiveness. Forgiveness is not what you think it is. It's not like, Oh, I forgive you. Do it again. Um, he's got a book called transcending trauma. So I think that would be a really good one to read. He was just a wonderfully kind, kind man. So if you go to his website, frankandersonmd.com, which John will put up on the um, chat there, he's got, it's got all of his books. So I really enjoyed him because he talked in depth about um, family systems <clears throat> and how trauma, you know, generational trauma, et cetera, gets going through family systems. He shared a little bit about his family history. Um, so it's, it's really, I really liked him. So then of course, Bessel van der Kolk, awesome, amazing, wonderful man. I totally acted like I was meeting my favorite rock star when I got to get him to sign my copy of The Body Keeps Score. Um, he laughed because I was like, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, Body Keeps Score, really good. And he's so funny. He's like, did you really read it? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, cover to cover. And I'm like, yeah, but it took a long time. He's like, yeah, it is kind of thick. And I'm like, yeah, but it's really helpful. So Bessel van der Kolk. Now I love him because he acknowledges and validates. Yeah. CPTSD is real. And he was talking, he's 82 now. He's, he's not a young man. He's in his eighties. And he was talking about how his Institute was trying to get the APA to acknowledge CPTSD, but he was calling it um, childhood developmental trauma. So inner child stuff. So all of the different ages that kids get stuck, adults get stuck in their inner child because of when the abuse happened. So he's totally down with it. He did, he had his, his people go out and, and interview 20,000 children, 20,000. And the APA said there was no evidence to support his new diagnosis. It's because they don't want it, guys. They don't want it. If you want to see change, my recommendation would be to start contacting whoever's in charge of the DSM-5, which I think is the APA. So um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of politics involved and Dr. Van der Kolk talked about that. And he's, <clears throat> he's to the point now where he's like, look, I'm 82, I gave it my best shot. I leave it to you youngsters. And unfortunately, I'm not into research and development. So it would need to be somebody coming up and coming that's into research and development that can present and be dynamic and charismatic enough to make it so that the APA cannot ignore it. Because the APA has been ignoring trauma for years. This was the first conference ever by Pesci specifically on trauma. So... Yeah, I'm really glad they did it. What took them so long, right? That's what every single presenter said. It's like, what took them so long? So, um, yeah, this is, so this is, there's a lot of political infighting. Like I said, the last time they did the DSM-5, they tried to get rid of personality disorders. So anyway, that is Bessel van der Kolk. He's got a new book coming out. So his website is BesselVanderKolk.com. Um, his new book... Let's see. Oh, oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. So he is also investigating um, MMDA assisted therapy for PTSD and volunteers are needed. So <clears throat> go to his website. If you are interested in doing M M MDMA assisted therapy for PTSD, he needs volunteers. Um, he's got a little button that says learn more. 
Um, if you are a therapist, there's a way to become an MDMA assisted therapist. Um, so I really love him and I really, and watching how the MDMA was able to bypass the, uh, amygdala and the fight, flight, freezer fawn. And the person was able to access stuff without going into re-traumatizing themselves was just, I was like, wow, this is exciting. So, and again, he, he, again, listed all of his concerns. He's like big pharma, you know, politicians, politics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So go to his website. If you are interested in that, he does have a new book coming out. I do not know if it is listed on his site yet, but um, it should be. So um, anyway, there's that. Uh, the next one <clears throat> that I wanted to talk about was Nidra Glover Tawab. This is her book. This is the um, boundaries flip chart. It's more for therapists, but you know what? It's good for everybody. So this is really helpful. I loved this. She's phenomenal. She gets it. She's been through trauma. She understands. So she boundaries is her big thing. She's like, this is going to keep you safe. And I'm like, hail to the yeah, it is. So this is a great book. She's a great person. Her website is nidratawab.com. John will put that up for you guys. And the last person, the last two people that I want to talk about is Ashley Judd and David Kessel. Now they're phenomenal. Ashley Judd talked about her mom choosing to end her own life. And unfortunately she found her right after she did it and right after she self-harmed. So there was a lot of discussion on grief. Um, so it's in the New York times, um, and it's, uh, John, I think you that's in there too, if you could put that up too. So she talks about, you know, what she went through, the trauma of that. And what was really upsetting is that apparently in the state that the um, death occurred, the, <clears throat> the state at the time allowed body camera footage to just be handed over immediately to the media. So not only did this happen to her, and she had to be there when her mom passed out of this world, but she had to relive it because the media jumped all over it and it was being replayed all over the place. And so she finally got a law put in that you don't release body cam stuff of things like that. That's not okay. And it's not okay. Nobody needs to see that. So um, there was that. So she's an amazing woman. And she talked about the charity work that she does and how she works with um, survivors whose families members have harmed themselves and died. Um, so it's, it was just really inspirational. She is a really amazing woman. And what I did not know is that she was one of the first actresses that outed, um, what the hell was that creep's name? Weinstein? Yeah. <clears throat> Weinstein. So the one that was doing the casting couch and sexually harassing other actresses. And because of her bravery, because of her speaking out, she got blacklisted. That's why you haven't seen her in Hollywood for a long time. And then, of course, she also was kind of like, do I really want that lifestyle? So she does a lot of charity work. And she's really, she's amazing. She's got a book out um, that I really recommend. It's her memoir. She's amazing. She's been in recovery for years. She's been through trauma, lots of trauma. Um, and the person, one of the people that helped her was David Kessler. David Kessler is a grief expert. Expert. His site is grief.com. So, and it it deals with all kinds of grief. It deals with you know losing a parent. It deals with losing a child. It deals with trauma. It deals with everything. David Kessler was really cool. I really liked him. He was very kind, and that's that is something I look for when I look in therapists: is somebody who's kind and who gets it. So all of those people that I talked about, they were kind, they got it. They been there, done that, bought the souvenir program, don't want to do it again. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, there is that. All right, let's dive into the terror of trust. So one of the, a lot of the questions that I've been getting lately is I've gotten out of the relationship. I've been working on myself. I do not trust anybody, least of all myself. Okay. So let's talk about that. What's going on? So this is why I'm saying this is different than CPT than PTSD. So what happens is 
is that the abuser gets in there and they literally put a, a egg beater in our brain with the gaslighting, with the rewriting history, with the constant lying, with the, you know, I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you behavior. Oh, Dr. Romani. I forgot to mention Dr. Romani. She's amazing. Oh my God. I love her. If you have not gone and watched her videos on YouTube, for the love of God, go watch Dr. Romani. She's amazing. She's great. And she's so funny because it's like she's very personable and she's very kind. And um, she, she the, I love the way she put it. So apologists want to say that narcissists can change, right? They can't. And the way that Dr. Romani put it, which I really loved, was she's like, look, I am an introvert. I can be extroverted when I have to do an interview or when I do a speech like this. But for the most part, I am an introvert. That is who I am. I can no more be an extrovert all the time than a narcissist can be a normal person. <laughs> and I was just like, girl, high five. So yeah, so it's, it's yeah, personality disorder. That's what a narcissist is. Their personality is disordered. You cannot change basic personality. You can't. There's no empathy with them. If they had empathy, first of all, they wouldn't have a personality disorder. But secondly, there would be room for change. There's no room in there to change. So there that is. So Dr. Romani, awesome. Love her. Back to the topic. Sorry about that. So um, so we don't trust because we've had all of this gaslighting, all of this lying, all of this intermittent positive rewards, all of this just crap basically shoved into our head. Up is down. Left is right. Green is blue. Nothing's real right? Because they lie to us all the time. They gaslight us all the time. They don't tell us the truth. They're not honest emotionally. They're not genuine. They're not, you know, they're cheating in some cases. They've got a, an addiction in some cases. So usually a porn addiction. Um, and when we get out of those relationships, we are, <laughs> as we're leaving the relationship, this is why it's so hard to trust. We have a lot of cognitive dissonance. So cognitive dissonance is where incoming information does not match what we've been told, right? And our brain just kind of goes plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh my God, what the hell? I don't get it. What? What? This doesn't make sense. So we're in a state of confusion. Now you add on to that PTSD, CPTSD, right? We're in a heightened state of alertness all the time. We don't trust ourselves and we sure as don't trust anybody else. Okay. So the high alertness, the state of heightened alertness, we're constantly looking for danger, 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 danger. Where's the danger? Where's the danger? Where's the danger? Where's the danger? Well, if there is no danger, our brain will create danger, even if it's not there. So it's really important to lower the periscope and start practicing when you need to be on alert and when you don't need to be on alert. So that means working on, where are my books? Boundaries, boundaries, and yourself, hello, and eh, where did I put it? The Self-Esteem Workbook by Glenn Schiraldi. It's on this desk somewhere. Good luck finding it. Dear God. Anyway, the point being is Self-Esteem Workbook by Glenn Schiraldi. These things help you come back to center. Narcissists, narcissistic abusers take us way off over here. Okay. We want to be back at center. And then when we get out of the relationship, we swing way over here and don't trust anybody. Over here, we're trusting everything they're saying until we figure it out, right? That they're liars and crazy and abusive and everything else. Then we swing way over here. The middle path is what you want. Dr. Romani made a really good point. She, and I totally agree with her. She had a, a total rant on the TikTokers that are doing these videos that are misinformation about narcissism. The word narcissistic is being flung around without really being narcissistic. You know, it's like, come on, there's, there's characteristics here, people. So what she likes to call it is <clears throat> aggressive personality disorder. So see, again, every doctor has got a different term for a lot of the same thing. So, um, uh, okay. So, 
Uh, every doctor has got a different term for a lot of the same thing, but I understand her point of view because in that way, if you label it as aggressive personality disorder, it's an aggressive personality, then the courts are not going to necessarily go, oh, well, you're diagnosing. Well, he's a very aggressive personality. Well, that's not a diagnosis. Boom. Mic drop. Bam. Yeah, I love it. So she's trying to find a way around all of the crap that happens in the courts. And that's one thing she really talked about is how the courts also contribute to us not being able to trust because we get re-abused in the family court system if you get a judge that's another freaking narcissist. So anyway, our amygdala, back to the trust thing. So we've got the high alertness that we've got to learn to down periscope but that comes with working on ourselves. This is not about other people. This is not about, well, how do I trust other people? You have to trust yourself. You have to trust your gut instincts. That is the most important way to start instilling trust and boundaries. But we're going to talk about that with other people. So, um, so the amygdala is looking for danger or the amygdala hears a threat and it immediately goes into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, and we're back on high alert, and we trust no one. And so some people, and I think justifiably so, go, you know what, screw this noise. I will just live alone the rest of my life and keep everybody at arm's length. I dig it. I dig it. But that makes for a very lonely existence. And there's good people out there. There is. You just got to find them, but you just got to find you first. That's the most important thing. So my recommendation would be get with a good trauma therapist, either the CPT therapy, which is cognitive processing therapy. I'm interested in it. I, I you know, if it can help quickly, like in 14 to 15 sessions, I'm like, oh, that would be lovely you know, to help get people rocking and rolling and back to their real lives, not this narcissistic abuse crap. So, um, so either a CPT therapist, a CBT therapist, even though this person didn't like CBT, but she's a CPT. So that makes perfect sense. Um, so, um, get with a trauma therapist, not just trauma informed. Now here's the thing. So, like I said, if you will notice most of the people I talked about, obviously went through their own trauma and talked about their own trauma. You know, it, not so much that one. So you want to find one that really, truly, honest to God gets it. You've got to interview the therapist. How do you know about trauma? Are you just book trained or have you been there, done that? You know, I mean, some good ones can just book train and get it, but a lot of them don't. So you want to make sure that you're dealing with a trauma therapist that's not going to re-traumatize you, victim blame you, or keep you in therapy for 100,000 million years. You don't want that either. So anyway, there is that. You want to get with a good trauma therapist. You want to start working on self-esteem. The self-esteem workbook, Glenn Schiraldi. Why? Recognize your own worth. Recognize your own value. Start doing self-care. How's your sleep? How's your eat? How's your exercising? What thoughts are you feeding yourself on a daily basis? Can you trust your gut? So how do we start trusting our gut? So when we're in an abusive relationship, the abuser basically turns reality on its head, right? So they flip the script, you know, they've done something, you bring it to them and suddenly somehow it's your fault. And now you're on the ropes apologizing for it. So you don't know what's real anymore. This is where the cognitive distance comes in. So we get out of that relationship and we start undoing the tangled mess that they put into our head. And one of the things is that we are told, oh, no, this isn't abuse. I'm not abusing you. This isn't abuse. You're the abuser. You're this. You're that. You, 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 right? The you, 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 you guns. So we no longer trust ourselves because we've been told that we're wrong, right? That, that no, you're not seeing things correctly. Your perception is wrong. You're, I'm not the abuser. You are. So as I said, when I worked at the homeless shelter, there were instances when people would tell me that their abuser would be beating the crap out of them as a kid and telling them, I'm not doing this. This isn't me. You're not being abused. You're not being abused. You know, you're, you're perceiving it wrong, you know, gaslighting them as, as the physical punishment was happening. 
So this is why we have a hard time trusting our gut because incoming information does not match what we know. And so when we get out of the relationship, we've got to start really grounding ourselves. Like I swear to God, practice grounding, practice meditation. Almost every single presenter talked about how they meditate, how they ground themselves, how they have some sort of not necessarily spiritual practice, but some sort of grounding themselves, getting themselves rock solid so that they can feel their body. You don't want to avoid your body. You don't want to avoid feelings. That's the big thing that I hear with survivors of abuse. I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel. Well, you kind of have to because your body is important. It tells us a lot of information and it's helpful. It's an ally. Your body is literally your ally. It tells you what you need to know. So you want to start listening to it. So what ends up happening is, is we see the pink elephant taking a crap in the corner of the living room. The abuser comes along, smacks us verbally or physically and says, that's not a pink elephant. You don't see anything. There's no pink elephant. So then we start doubting ourselves and that's where the self-doubt comes in. So we've got to get to the point where we start going, you know what? There is a pink elephant over there and I do see it. Yeah, that's real. Uh-huh. hundred percent. And that comes from certainty. <clears throat> and certainty comes from self-esteem. So this is why it's really important. Start working the self-esteem workbook by Glenn Schiraldi. Start working the disease to please Harriet Breaker. Start working the boundaries guidebook by Nidra Tawab. Awesome. Do it. Get your boundaries together. Read Bessel van der Kolk's The Body Keeps Score. It is thick. It is kind of hard to get through. It can be triggering. Just warning you. <clears throat> but it's immensely helpful. It is. So one way to start practicing, okay, is you get really quiet. You just get, you take some time throughout the day. Now, this is something that Nidra talked about and I loved it because she will have clients be like, well, I can't meditate. I, I don't have time to ground. I don't have time to do that. Well, you've got time to go get your nails done. You've got time to go get a cup of coffee. You've got time to, she's like, it takes literally a minute. You're telling me you're not worth a minute of your day? And I was just like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, you're worth a minute of your day. You're worth more than that. But let's start in a minute. So it's just grounding yourself, getting quiet, noticing the difference between the inner critic that's yammering up here and all the craziness and all the drama and all the story, 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 and all the story that goes along with the heart and noticing how calm the gut is. The gut is a simple yes or no question to, or yes or no answer to a yes or no question. There's no story. So you know you're dealing with the head or the heart if all of a sudden it's like, well, yes, but this and that and the other thing. And the, oh, well, what about this? And oh gosh, confusion and da, 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 da. No, the gut is a simple yes or no answer to a yes or no question, period. So you start practicing with things you know. Okay. So I've talked about it before. I'm going to talk about it again. I hate peanut butter. I hate it. It's the texture. Don't like it. So if I ask my gut, if I like peanut butter, it's like a visceral kind of, Oh God, no. Right. That's my no answer. And that tends to be my no answer for everything. That's a no answer. Does that make sense? It's almost like my gut just like, mm, no, I'm like, Ooh, okay. Better listen to that. But if I ask my gut, okay, do I like Reese's peanut butter cups? Yep. No story. Just yep. Real calm, real quiet, pleasant feeling. And that's my yes for other things that are yeses. Does that make sense? So trusting yourself involves a lot of validation. Of, oops, didn't turn the sound off, a lot of validation of what your kids went through, your inner children, okay? So one of the things you can do is the Inner Child Workbook by Katherine Taylor or the inner, Recovering the Inner Child by Lucia Cappuccioni. You can do guided imagery and validate them. And, and this may be triggering and, and something that they talked about in the conference is that a lot of people have gone through gun violence in domestic violence situations. And so rather than using the word triggering, activating, I, I think that's good because I didn't even consider that. So 
this may be activating to your trauma. So just to let you know that. So you go through and what you do is you imagine standing behind your little one and your, your hands are on their shoulders and you're watching what's going on and you're validating them. You're just validating them. It's like, yep, this happened hundred percent because acceptance is really huge to trusting the self and trusting what you know to be true. It's true. So, and, and Dr. Romani talked about that. She was like, it's important to accept. It's important to accept. This is how they are. They are not going to change ever. Stop being surprised when they act like asshats in court. They, this is who they are. They're not ever going to change. And what I loved too, that she said that really resonated with me is when apologists are like, oh, well, you know, they can't help it. <clears throat> no, no, they can help it. And here's how she knows. And here's how I know. If they can behave out in public and not do what they normally do, and they wait until they get in the car or they wait until they're behind closed doors and then they start abusing, they absolutely can help it. If they were truly unable to control themselves, they would be acting out in public. They'd be acting out in court. They'd be acting out wherever. Do you see where I'm going with that? It wouldn't be selective. It wouldn't be only in private. Okay. So anyway, back to the trust thing. They absolutely can help it. They choose not to. They don't want to. They like the feeling of sadism and power. And Dr. Romani talked about that too. So anyway, the point being is, is that you start working on acceptance. Yes, this happened. Yes, they are the way they are. They are never going to change. I refuse to be surprised when they behave like asshats. Seriously, because them getting us off balance and being surprised by how they act. Whoa, how old are you when you want them to behave normally? That's something to work on. Where did this come from? Why are you not trusting yourself to know certainty what you know? You know they're not going to change. You know how they are. There's a reason you left. There's a reason you got out. And it's not capricious. It's real. You know what I'm saying? So you go back through the childhood and you hold yourself, standing behind yourself, and you validate the heck out of that kid. And you keep moving through each age that got damaged and you validate them. Yes, you are seeing this. Yes, this did happen. Yes, you are a survivor. Yes, this sucks total ass. I'm so sorry. You know, and you just keep validating and loving, validating and loving, validating and loving and accepting. And that helps you to trust because what do targets of abuse need more than anything else? to be believed, to be heard. How many targets of abuse have problems with their voice? How many targets of abuse feel like they're not heard, not seen, not believed? A lot, a lot. So this helps with the trust. This is you trusting you back and forth. You with your little ones, little ones with you. It's like you, you're the parent now, mom or dad, you are the parent now. You validate them. You let them know. You hear them. You see them. You believe them. Yes, this did happen. Yes, you were abused. Yes, this person is never going to change. And no, it's not your fault. And I'm right here behind you. I got your back, quite literally. So you can do that guided imagery. And at the end of the guided imagery, you just hug your little one and just let them know you're there for them 110%. They did not deserve this. You love them. You're there for them. And you guys can talk anytime you need to. Then you let them go play safely in a safe place. Does that make sense? So it's about validating, accepting, acknowledging, writing and burning as much as you need to. Because here's the thing. It's sometimes hard to heal if we're stuck in the anger part of it. So it's good to work the anger part of it out. And part of the anger part of it is we weren't believed, we weren't heard, we weren't listened to. So how can we trust? Who can we trust? Well, we got to start trusting ourselves. So you validate that. I have a right to be angry. I have a right to be angry that I was abused at all these different ages. Or I have a right to be angry that I was abused by my boss. Or I have a right to be angry that I was abused by my lover. I have a right to be angry. Nobody gets to be treated like that. That's not okay. You know, so you start being the hero you needed. Seriously, it literally is you being the hero you needed. 
and starting to trust your own gut and your own intuitions. This is going to help fix your picker. Does that make sense? So boundaries for other people. Okay. You want to come up with your list of deal breakers. And this also will help with trust. If you have your list of rock solid deal breakers, like nobody's going to cross these boundaries. I am not interested. Don't even try. So number one, no gaslighting. Serious as a heart attack. Write this down because you're going to need it. No gaslighting. No lying. No flipping the script. No cheating. No stealing. No um, circular arguments. No uh, fake apologies. Okay. Those are all automatic ejection from the game. And those need to be rock solid. Those are for your protection. And now abusers will not like it. Abusers will make fun of you for having boundaries. Abusers will get angry at you for having boundaries. Abusers will, um, well, you need to give me another chance. No, no, mother clucker, I don't. I don't need to give you another chance. You just showed me who you are. Bye. Don't give them another chance. You don't need to. There's no, you are not a saint. It is not your job to fix them. Okay. When they show you who they are, believe them the first time. Don't allow them back in. Seriously, especially if it's one of these deal breakers. So having the deal breakers is for your safety. Okay. And if somebody crosses one of those deal breakers, you punt them out of your game. Nope, you're ejected. Sorry, you're not even sitting in the penalty box. We're done. Bye-bye, red card. Bye. Do you see where I'm going with that? And you work on your inner children. You work on trusting you as an adult. You work on trusting you with your gut instinct. You work on self-esteem. You work on boundaries. You work on your body. You work on your worth, understanding your own worth, and not being hard on yourself. So something that a lot of survivors do is that they pick on themselves and they're like, well, I should be trusting and I should be doing this. Well, stop. You're shooting all over yourself. Stop it. Stop. You're doing what you need to do until you can do something different. Okay. Until all of this information kind of sinks in. Okay. So I don't recommend going hermit and never you know, being around people ever again. I don't recommend that. But I do recommend validating that, yeah, I'm scared. You damn straight, I'm scared. You're right. I've been hurt and my amygdala is trying to keep me safe. So yeah, I have been hurt and it's scary to put myself out there. But, and if I have my list of deal breakers and I honor that, if I have my self-esteem and I honor that, if I work on my gut instinct and I honor that. If I validate my inner children and I honor them, I'm safe. Seriously. Because that's going to keep you safe. Okay. That is it for the lecture. Let us dive into the questions. Where is my cursor? Okay. Okay. I don't trust. I try, but I get burned. Each time I'm confused and mourn. Grief is a huge part of it. You betcha. I say I will never trust anyone again. I have tried many times through the years, but now I'm tired of trying. Is this normal? Yeah, 100%. Listen, guys, we have been through a lot, a, really a lot. And our pickers have been broken and our inner children have not been healed. And I think that's a huge part of it is that we've got to work on ourselves. So when we keep picking somebody over and over and over again, different people, same issue, right? What's going on is that inner child looks outside of ourselves and goes, hmm, ooh, look, this person over here, they kind of sort of remind me of my abusers on some level. I know if I can make them love me, I prove mom and dad, original abusers, wrong. Half of a doo-doo sandwich half of a doo-doo sandwich, <clears throat> total doo-doo sandwich. You don't want to do that. This is why it's important to get with a trauma therapist. This is why you want to work on the inner children. Who is the imago for that? Who do you keep trusting? Who do they remind you of? Who of your abusers do these people remind you of? Does that make sense? So you want to do that. You want to get through and roll up your sleeves and get through the muck and figure out who the original abuser was 
or the original abusers, who these people remind you of in, in the family of origin, okay? And you want to start undoing the damage. You didn't deserve it. That's not, that's not what you deserve. Your inner child thought that it could heal it by experiencing it again and doing things differently. But listen to me now, believe me later. No matter how differently you do it with an abuser, it'll always end up the same. Always. Always. They follow a script. So no matter which pretzel you turn yourself into, they will find a way to make you wrong. They will find a way to abuse you. They will find a way to do what they do. So really important, work on yourself. Work on your picker. Work on the inner child. Work on the family of origin issues. Seriously. Read Frank Anderson. He's amazing. Love him. Read Bessel van der Kolk. Amazing. Love him. Nidra Tawab. Love her. Amazing. Do it. So that is going to help you. So we grieve every time. And the thing of it is, is that we, we grieve the current, but we also re-grieve all of the previous. And that's why it's so painful because our bodies and our amygdala doesn't know the difference between past, present, future. Does that make sense? So when we grieve, it is this intense grieving. It's like the loss of the original family of origin abuser, okay? The loss of having to try to fix it. Oops, that one didn't work. Oops, another one didn't work. Oops, another one didn't work. So we're grieving all of that. So this is why David Kessler is so important is because, yes, grieving is a huge part of healing. Huge, ginormous. You don't want to just shove that under the rug and pretend that it's not there. Even though abusers are abusive, we still mourn the loss of the illusion. We do. We mourn the loss of who they presented as in the beginning because what they do is they mirror us. Oh, you know, you like ice cream. I like ice cream. You like to ice skate. I like to ice skate. You like moose. I like moose. This is like Anna and Hans from Frozen, right? So they come across as the perfect match, the perfect person, the best friend, the, you know, whatever. And then of course the mask slips and holy mother of Moses, what the hell? you know, and we're devastated. And we keep wanting to get that first person back. It's never going to happen. They weren't real. They were not real. It was an illusion. Damn good illusion, but an illusion. So we've got to mourn the loss of what we thought we had. And then we mourn the loss of trying to fix it until we can really, really validate and love those inner children, validate and love ourselves, recognize our worth, recognize our value, honor ourselves, honor our bodies, honor our emotions, and really put the junk back onto the abusers. Like, none of this crap is mine. Ugh. You know, hand it back to them. It's not yours to carry. It's not your luggage. I um, hope that answered the question. Yes, it is normal. Okay. I have a hard time trusting myself and accepting my own mistakes without beating myself up. How do I start learning to trust myself? Well, first of all, let's talk about accepting our mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. Nobody is perfect. We do not walk on water unless it's frozen. And even then it's kind of dicey. But the point being is when a mistake happens, you accept it. The, oops. Okay. So let's talk about the difference between the inner critic and the inner cheerleader. So the inner critic is the one who grabs on to something that we did wrong and just beats the living crap out of ourselves. Oh, that was stupid. Why did you do that? You're so dumb. Blah, 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 blah. Meh. So what you got to do, literally, you want the inner cheerleader, not the inner critic to be talking. So when the inner critic grabs onto something and starts, you know, blah, 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 you're terrible, you're awful, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for your input. Shut the bleep up. Why? Because I say so. And I am the boss. You are the boss. Does that make sense? I am the boss. You do not get to speak to me that way. How dare you? Have fun with it. How dare you? I made a mistake. And you know what? I've learned from it and I'm moving on. Thanks for your input. Bye-bye. Go pound sand. Okay? So you don't resist the thought. You don't be like, oh my God, I don't want to think about that. I don't want, I don't want to think about what I did wrong. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. Because all you're going to be thinking about is that thought of what you did yourself up. So what you want to do is you want to acknowledge it. Yep. I screwed up. Okay. How can I fix this? How do I make amends? How do I change this? How do I fix this? 
do what you need to to fix it. If it can't be fixed, okay, mm, painful lesson, okay, can't be fixed. Don't need to do that again. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Forgive yourself. That is tough. You know why? Because our abusers, especially family of origin, have told us that we're worthless and that we don't deserve forgiveness because they would rub our nose in any little thing we did wrong. They were wrong. Healthy, normal parents don't do that kind of crap. They don't. So now you are your own parent. So how would you treat your own child? Okay, kiddo, you made a mistake. Let's see what needs to be done to make amends. Okay, we've done everything we can. What can you do differently next time? Perfect. Do that. Gentle, kind correction. That's it. No putting yourself down, no beating yourself up, no making yourself wrong, no being vicious, none of that. Okay. So let me see, go back to that question. Okay. So, and that is how you start working on trusting yourself. So you start tr learning to trust yourself by starting to work on you and getting rid of the judgment, getting rid of that inner critic. You really, really, really got to put that bad boy down because that is just no bueno. <clears throat> okay, guys. I am really not feeling well, so I'm going to call it for today. You guys go have a great week. I will do a quick video on Wednesday with any questions that I was not able to get to because I'm pretty sure I was not able to get some, to some. So um, the next two weeks, I am going to be off on vacation. So I was at a conference all last week. I went to Disneyland, which was kind of a vacation, but not really. Um, and so I'm going to be off on vacation for two weeks when I come back on the 12th. We're going to be talking about the holiday pitfalls. So we're going to be talking about holiday insanity. So I want to make sure you guys are all safe and ready for Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day. We're, we're in the Hoover season. So be aware. All right, you guys, go be good. Take care, good care of yourselves. Drink plenty of water. Wash your hands still. Don't get this stupid cold. No, it's not COVID. It's just a cold but it's annoying. So um, take good care of yourselves, drink plenty of water, eat healthy, and I will talk to you on Wednesday. And then after that, I won't see you until November 12th. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.